We're up at Curtis's Bigfoot sighting location up in Lost Creek, taking a look around. We come up here a couple times a year. We always come back to these sighting locations. There's a spring at the mouth of this little canyon where he had his sighting and it, there's usually liquid water there year round, so. And Derek was just pointing out some game trails back in here. Apologize about the snow crunching. We're trying to learn how to levitate over the snow, but so far we're only able to do it one leg at a time. Derek's getting close to where the deer was laying. Stop standing on it, aren't we? I think it's right around here. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. And it was right up, right up here. Yeah. By where the... the well, yeah, the, you know, I, I, I... You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. It was right to the left of those where he actually saw it standing, staring at him. Yeah, the deer had been screaming in pain or yeah. in distress. It was dying. Couldn't give birth, couldn't get the actual fawn out. Yeah, Curtis comforted it. Once he realized he couldn't save it, he started comforting it. And after it expired, he noticed the Bigfoot up on the hillside here. We ended up finding, I don't know, probably half a dozen hand prints and feet prints. Yeah, we found a bunch of footprints. 17 inches long by over seven inches wide, most of the yep. footprints. And then the hand prints were uh, about 14 inches from uh, the bottom of the palm to the longest finger. I mean, you measure your uh, finger, your hand from the bottom of your palm to the top of your biggest finger. And this thing had 14 inch length on that. We found two handprints that we were positive were handprints that we could. We always see game footprints, even in the winter time back here because there's liquid water at the bottom. I'm sure animals can eat snow. For... Yeah, did you see the spring? It was actually running. Yeah, I heard it running. It's 31 degrees right now and the water's still running. Usually you couldn't get back here. Usually this time of the year, you're, you're not getting here unless you're on a snowmobile. We've had a real mild winter in Utah this year. Good for the animals. We've had a few harsh ones in a row. The animals need a break, so do I. Need a break from harsh winters. Scrooting through here. Yeah, something's using the same path that we're using. Looks like old game tracks. And it looks like it stepped down right by another bush. 
see what I'm seeing? This track here. Where'd it come from though? I don't see anywhere else where it would have would have came from. I see a possible structure right here. Could be deadfall. It's beautiful back here. Turkey vultures are circling around. There's something dead nearby, more than likely. All right, well, we're going to keep looking around. If we find anything that looks like it could be Bigfoot related, we'll certainly take photos and videotape it. I hope you enjoyed a Bigfoot sighting location. We'll be coming back often to Curtis's in the summertime. We'll be looking in some of the caves that are up here. What kind of cat? Is it a mountain lion or a... No, it looks a little bit smaller. Looks like a bobcat? bobcat. You can see the little pads right here. Where it walked on the top here, I get all your way. Yeah. Yeah, we found what's more than likely a bobcat. You would think there would be a prey item here if there's a bobcat. Bobcat can take up. down small deer. I actually watched a video where a bobcat took down an adult deer. There's that turkey vulture. I don't know if this camera sees it. Not really much to tell, other than it's a pretty, pretty steady stream of wildlife that comes through to through here. And uh, primarily it looks like deer. Big time deer trail. And we found bobcat prints right on either side of this deer trail. Nothing that screams squatch so far today. I want to, before we leave, go look around the spring and see if we can see any uh, anything Bigfooty by the stream. If it wants a liquid drink of water, that's where it's going to have to go. If there's uh, we, one in yeah, there. Talking about, you know, a good bedding area, someplace to keep you down and out of the weather if you need to. And when we were up here, we came across multiple bedding sites that were up here that were just perfect just kind of tucked down underneath some junipers that you know pretty much would have kept you out of a lot of the weather right up on that um rock yeah rock. right underneath that rock face yeah um the the thing with this is it's probably a lot softer even though it's colder but you'd still, still want to get yourself up off the ground. Because you're going to be just miserable if you didn't. Right down there, look, the spring's still liquid in wintertime. Actually, this ground is soft. So a lot of this ground is actually real moist. See, look, you can see me squishing the ground. It's not even frozen. It just says, just the amount of moisture that has been seeping down from this place. And we believe this spring keeps the game coming down and hence the predators here. Bobcat, perhaps mountain lions, and maybe Bigfoot was a predator the day it was spotted in this canyon. Yeah, when it was spotted, just from our vantage point, 
It was just up and to the right, up on the hillside up here. It was less than a mile away from the spring. You can actually see that it was right on the top of this knoll, right up here. He's in view of it. Yep, if you're an ambush predator, this is the kind of place you want to stake out. And if you want to drink yourself. All right, we'll keep looking around. We see anything that might be Bigfoot related. You guys will get to see it here.